All right, so here's the section number and the title. This is chapter one, section one, and it's titled Understanding Points, Lines, and Planes. Okay, so the first thing we're going to touch on are some basic vocabulary. The easiest one is the first one, point. So the book has a definition for point, and it reads like this. It says, a point names a location and has no size. It is represented by a dot. So you put a little dot on your paper like that. We're going to put a capital P right next to it. And then we're going to talk about notation. Or you might be asked to name. Name it. And in this case, you would just say point capital P. Point P. Or in some cases, you would just write a capital P. The next one is line. <coughs> so you've probably seen a line in Algebra 1. We usually put it on a coordinate plane in Algebra 1. In geometry, we're just going to put it in a regular plane. But it basically looks like this, with arrows on both ends, meaning it goes on forever. We're going to put a point here and a point here, call them X and Y. Okay? Most of you have seen a line before. But you may not have notated it. In this case, we're going to call it line x y so you write capital x and capital y and then over the top of it you put a bar with both air with two arrows going both directions you can also call this one line y x so you can flip the order just like that <laughs> why because it goes on forever in both directions Every once in a while, it won't be labeled like that. It'll just have a cursive lowercase letter, like a lowercase l. And you would just call it line l. Not as often, but you see it sometimes. The third one is called a plane, P-L-A-N-E. And plane, the definition for a plane, is a plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever. So we're going to put three points, three random points. We'll call this one A, this one B, and this one C. And then we're going to put it inside of a parallelogram. A parallelogram is just basically a slanted rectangle. <coughs> Notice that it has at least three points, and they're all capitals. So we'll call this plane A, B, C. It's usually notated that way, but every once in a while, you'll see a cursive capital letter like this fancy R right here. And instead of calling it plane A, B, C, you'll call it plane R. Capital fancy R. All right, so now we're going to talk about collinear. Collinear just means on the same line. Coplanar just means on the same plane. And then non coplanar just means the opposite, right? So not in the same plane. Usually you see non-coplanar when you have more than one plane. So you'll have one plane going this way, and one plane going this way, and you'll have some points on this one and some points on this one, and they'll say, what are some non-coplanar points? So you'll name one on this one and one on this one, okay? They'll just be in different planes. Or one will be floating out in space, and one will be on a plane, okay? All right. Now let's talk about a segment. <coughs> so a segment is part of a line, and it has two endpoints. The one we're about to draw looks like this. We'll call one endpoint A and one endpoint B. It's different from a line in that it does not have arrows going both ways. OK, 
okay? It doesn't extend forever. It stops right here and it stops right here. Its notation is either, either AB, seg segment AB, or segment BA. The order can be flipped just like it could with line, okay? But the next one, order does matter because it's a ray. If you've ever seen a ray before, you know that it has one endpoint and then it goes on forever in the other direction. So we'll call this one ray RS. So you write the capital R and S and you draw the ray over the top of it, okay? <laughs> this one has to be called ray RS. It cannot be called ray SR. So we're going to put a big X through ray SR to remind us not to accidentally put it in the wrong order. Okay? The, uh, the next one is called opposite rays. And if we draw what looks like opposite rays, we need three points, F, E, G. And opposite means just basically that one's going to the left and one's going to the right, or one's going up and one's going down. They're just opposite of each other, okay? So we can either say ray E, G and ray E, F. Because if you look at them, EG is going to the right and EF is going to the left. Or we can say ray FG and ray GF. Because FG is going to the right and GF is going to the left. So they're opposite of each other. All right, the next word we're going to talk about is postulate. Postulate is basically a statement. It's a statement that is accepted as true. Okay. I'm about to read you some postulates. I'm about to tell you their statements. And when you hear them, you're gonna go, oh yeah, I, that makes sense. It's, it's pretty true. <laughs> and uh, you'll, under, you'll kind of start to understand what a postulate is, okay? So they're each gonna have numbers. The first one has number one dash one dash one, okay? What that means is it's chapter one, section one, the first postulate. So it's the first one in the whole book. And here's what it says. It says, through any two points, there is exactly one line. Okay. So the other day when we were working in the Algebra 1 review book, we were, draw we were drawing a line. And I said to you guys, how many points do I need to make a line? And you said, two. two. Okay, so this po postulate basically says two points are going to equal one line. I was going to make you write out the whole thing, but I figured out a way to make it shorter. Okay, so we're going to take our two points through them. We're going to draw one line. And that postulate is just basically this statement. Everybody says, oh yeah, that's true. You have two points, it makes one line. Kind of obvious, right? Two points, one line. All right. The next postulate is 1 1 2. So, chapter one, section one, the second postulate, and it says this that through any three nonclinear points, there are exactly there is exactly one plane containing them. So, over here we did two points. Now we're going to do three. One, two, three. And three points, instead of making a line, makes one plane, P-L-A-N-E. And we already drew a, 
a plane up here, it's basically a slanted rectangle called a parallelogram, and it represents a space, like a flat space, okay? <coughs> That's our second postulate or statement that basically we call truth, all right? The next one is 1-1-3, and it says... If two points lie in a plane, then the line containing those points lies in the plane. Okay, so we're going to go with two points again, just like we did right here. We had two points, which made one line. <coughs> so two points is going to equal one line, but this time we're going to put it in a plane. So we're going to draw the parallelogram around it, which is basically your slanted rectangle. And that's the third postulate. We have two more to go. The next one is 1-1-4. One -dash -one -dash so chapter one, section one, the fourth postulate says, if two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. Okay, so we're gonna draw two lines, put arrows on both ends, Those two lines are intersecting. They intersect right here in the middle. So I'm going to make a point right there. I'm going to darken it up. <coughs> and when you have two lines, that's going to be equal to one point of intersection. That's all that postulate says. You have two lines. They intersect. They intersect at one point. Kind of obvious, kind of easy. All right, and the last one, 1-1-5, one -dash -one -dash says this. If two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. Okay? So I'm going to use these two index cards to represent two planes. Okay? You have two planes. They're basically flat surfaces, and they're coming to intersect. And just like magic, they intersect and they look like this. And their intersection is this line that goes right through the middle. See it? See the line going from this finger to this finger? There's a straight line. Okay? I know it looks like magic, but I just cut it with scissors. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm magic. Okay? So we're gonna have two lines, or, oh, not two lines, two planes, is going to equal one line. Two, oh, two planes are going to equal one line. And this one's kind of hard to draw. And here's where you're about to discover that I'm not an artist, okay? I also can't sing. I mean, I do sing, but you don't want to listen to it, okay? I want to hear it now. Right? So basically, we need to draw this three-dimensional figure so we're going to start by drawing a slanted plane this way. So kind of a twisted rectangle. And then you're going to draw a dash through the middle of it like that. That's where they're going to intersect. You still need to draw the second plane. So the second plane, we're going to start one end up here, connect it to here and to here. And then part of it is going to be behind. So it disappears back there. Yeah, it's not very amazing. So, you know, picture this in your brain. <laughs> not that. Yeah, 